Professor Dave and Chegg here. We know that spectroscopy is the study of the interaction of light and matter. We can use this interaction to gather information regarding the structure of a molecule, irradiating substances with electromagnetic radiation of specific wavelengths, and observing the interaction. IR spectroscopy is one such technique, so let's learn how this works now. The IR in IR spectroscopy stands for infrared, so as one might guess, this technique involves irradiating a sample with infrared radiation. This is the region of the electromagnetic spectrum shown here, the next section lower in energy after visible light. The reason we do this is that infrared light is able to induce specific types of motion in the molecules in the sample. We already know that molecules are involved in translational and rotational motion. Translational motion allows molecules to move around in space with respect to each other, and rotational motion allows for all the sigma bonds in the molecule to be rotating all the time, producing the various conformations. But chemical bonds are also doing other things, as they can exhibit vibrational motion. Bonds can stretch, which means they can expand and contract slightly. This can be done in a symmetric way with respect to a central atom, which looks like this, or in asymmetric fashion. We call this symmetric stretch and asymmetric stretch. We can also get bending, where atoms will twist a bit to expand and contract the bond angles. Again, this can be done in symmetric or asymmetric fashion to produce what we call symmetric bend and asymmetric bend. All of these vibrational modes are induced by infrared light, and the specific frequency that will cause these behaviors will depend on the precise identity of the bond. So carbon-carbon, carbon-oxygen, carbon-hydrogen, oxygen-hydrogen, these will all absorb infrared light of differing wavelengths. So when light of varying wavelengths passes through the sample, the wavelengths that don't make it to the detector must have been absorbed by the sample, and this tells us what kinds of functional groups are present in the molecule. The way we will be reporting the wavelengths of IR radiation is using their wave numbers. Wave number, represented by nu with a bar over it, is the reciprocal of wavelength in centimeters. So it is expressed in inverse centimeters. The useful region in an IR spectrum is from 4,000 to 400 inverse centimeters, meaning that 400 to 4,000 cycles fit in one centimeter. The main thing to understand is that with IR spectroscopy, we are irradiating a sample with infrared radiation, seeing which wavelengths pass through the sample to the detector and which do not, and taking those that are not transmitted as inducing some kind of molecular motion, which will be characteristic of the missing frequencies. This tells us about the functional groups present on a molecule. Professor Dave for Chegg, see you next time.